Okay, this is part two. Uh, I'm working on a uh, Motorola R2210B service monitor. Um, the big thing I'm doing today is basically the, the components that I already know that I need, and some of them are just generic stuff. Others have specific mechanical properties that I need to look at and make sure that I can get. Um, for instance, this, uh, this relay, you can get it at uh, RF parts, this exact part. Um, but there is a, you know, a standard um, that you can actually get this same relay uh, cross-reference to another part. Uh, a couple of other things I need to actually take is um, mechanical measurements of a lot of these caps. Um, so that I make sure that they'll fit in the case. Uh, big important things are, you know, the diameter and height of the uh, cap, the cap itself. And I'll just give you a close up here. Um, I'm looking at the spacing on these leads. Um, that's what's going to be most important, so that when I get replacement capacitors, uh, they actually fit and work. Okay, I'm just going to get some rough estimates of of the measurements. Um, a lot of these uh, relays are, these are going to be, for whatever reason, a lot of the measurements on the relays are actually in inches. Um, and a lot of all the measurements on the capacitors are going to be in millimeters. So just keep that in mind. Okay, the case dimensions on this is approximately an inch, uh, 0.15. Um, the gate's width is about a half inch. Another thing that you want to look at, uh, basically the uh, pins actually are all the way at the end on this side. And they're a little bit off uh, here, but the most important measurement on relays is the actual pin spacing itself. Um, on some of these you'll actually get uh, different pin lengths, um, even on, a, on one package. Generally that doesn't matter on through hole parts, but usually it's some kind of indicator as to how, how the relay is laid out internally. Uh, the pin spacing on these um, uh, the inners are 15 millimeter and it looks like 25 millimeter uh, end to end just to kind of give you an idea the actual case dimension in millimeters 29 millimeters okay so we've got uh, these are the two caps that I want to replace. These are the ones that are kind of poofed out. Um, and uh, the big thing is, is the diameter and the height. We want to make sure that we stay within that. Um, generally, it's okay. I try to get the exact same size, but generally it's okay to go with a smaller size as long as it still fits on the board and doesn't interfere with anything. Um, so that's what we're going to shoot for. And these caps are approximately 25 millimeters cross and about 42 millimeters high pin spacing is about uh, 11 to uh, 12 millimeters these large caps uh, most of these smaller caps I actually have, um, they're fairly standard values. Um, I don't see any of these leaking, but there's actually on the power uh, supply that's in this unit, there's not a lot of, uh, a lot of, not a lot of capacitors to replace. So while you have it out, um, it's a good idea to replace them, especially if you actually test uh, and you know, have a high ESR or something like that. Um, and basically what I use, um, I just use this uh, Mastec uh, LCR tester uh, to quickly just check check the caps, and it'll give you an ESR value, and it'll also tell you the capacitance value of what it's detecting. Um, one of the areas of of this particular power supply that I, I really want to take a look at are the uh, the diodes. Um, 
I think these, if they're if they're like the uh, 2000 series, uh, there's a couple of these uh, diodes that are actually really sensitive to um, over voltage conditions. It does take a whole lot to actually damage them. Um, so I'm going to check those before I actually order any parts. Uh, I will probably take and see if I can actually cross-reference those parts and go ahead and get those. Generally with these semiconductors, it's actually easier just to go ahead and order the parts because the uh, Shipping is the main cost uh, on a lot of these smaller semiconductors. And the easiest way to do this testing, uh, I've got a bench meter. It's a 34401A uh, uh, HP, and I've got the uh, I've got it in diode test mode. And you'll just want to check the diodes to make sure that they are actually functioning. And I have not actually counted on this particular board, but there's probably approximately, I don't know, 20 diodes to actually check on this one power supply. So you kind of have to go through methodically. Um, usually I kind of sort them out by part size and area of the board, and I just try to break it up into zones. Okay, so far so good. Um, all the diodes that I've tested thus far have been in good shape. Um, I'm fairly confident at this point on um, the parts order. I'm actually going to order uh, the caps to be replaced here uh, in these two relays. And you know, always run the risk of uh, there's something else wrong that will actually cause the part to fail. Um, the parts that I will be replacing are not uh, generally will cause another part that I'm not planning on replacing to fail. Um, so I feel pretty confident about going ahead and getting those parts replaced and making sure that those parts are working. Uh, since I know I actually do have problems with the relay uh, making contact and I can see that these caps are kind of raised up. Um, they're still within, I think these are 20% caps. Um, they're just on the edge uh, of the 20%. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I don't think the ESR level in the, the uh, degradation of the cap is actually a problem. I'm fairly certain at this point, and I'll know more when I get the relay, whether that that is actually the problem or not. Um, these are real difficult uh, to, to actually fully connect. Um, I think uh, I think they actually do make an extender card for this. And if it comes down to it, I'll actually make an extender for this edge connector and make an extender for this. What That way I can actually power the power supply outside of the uh, service monitor and that'll give me a lot more information. Uh, but for right now I'm going to go ahead and order those parts and uh, see if I can get at least uh, more of this working. I know I know, right now the, the known thing is that the relay is not actually making a good connection um, and more than likely that, that's going to cause some problems. I do hear it clicking on the DC side, so some of the board is working, at least uh, it, it would seem that this logic board is working. I think these these do have, uh, uh, you know, overcurrent, undercurrent, over voltage, uh, low voltage, um, so I may need to make some adjustments after I place some of these parts. Okay, I just wanted to go over real quick uh, how to determine whether you have a relay problem or not. I have the relay out. And up here I have a power supply and I have a, a four wire uh, ohm uh, measurement set up on my Hewlett Packard uh, 3457A bench multimeter. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it up to one of the poles. And I'm just going to actuate it. I'm um, using the power supply. These are 12 volt relays. Um, right now I have a good connection and when I, uh, when I apply power it breaks the connection. Okay, I've, I've released power and one of the things I notice either it, A it doesn't all the way reset back to full connection so I see you know 
either several hundred ohms or several thousand ohms um, initially and it kind of eases off and may go back to zero and then other times um, you know it's a it's a it's a dead open um, which basically means the relay contacts are not making good enough contact uh, typically and on, on both of these particular relays um, it's only one side um, and I assume that's why someone prior has actually pried these relays apart uh, to try to adjust or, or get them get them to work again. Um, I'm not I'm not even gonna mess with them. Um, I've never had really good luck uh, getting any of these mechanical relays back working again. Um, you can clean them. Uh, a lot of people recommend running paper. Uh, I've got uh, you know when I did the 430 the TS 430 rebuild. Um, that was pretty much your only option. You basically took a, a you know a piece of paper and kind of tried to rub it between the contacts to get them clean and, and not cause a lot of uh, disruption. Uh, but it's fairly difficult to get these to actually fall uh, together because they are dual pole. There's actually two, and there's a little metal piece that's actually pushing on the contacts. And a lot of times they just they just get out of out of sync and out of even, and you end up with one side with a lot better connection than the other. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and replace these. I just wanted to kind of give you a quick idea of uh, of how to check these out, how to test them. Um, you know, normal one meter works fine. I like the four wire setup because I have the, uh, the these Kelvin clips that uh, attach. Um, they give you a really good uh, they give you a real good impression of when the contact actually does t does touch. Uh, you know, do you still have some resistance there that kind of lingers and goes away as the spring pressure? Uh, you know changes um, and you can actually see that visibly with the uh, meter and, and these relays okay so I have my parts list together um, all this is available I, I'm gonna order all this on one order from Mauser um, and when they come in I'm, I'm slowly basically gonna replace these parts and then start doing testing uh, this will be part two of the video uh, or the end of part two of the video uh, I'll do part three as soon as I get those uh, parts in. A couple of the things I just wanted to mention in closing is I've noticed a couple of things about this, this particular service monitor. One is there's actually a couple of screws missing uh, that actually connect this high voltage board and hold this uh, piece of fish paper down. Um, and there's two screws there. Um, they're the same type of screw that is in the others. Um, so I'll order some replacements for those screws. And what that tells me is, is someone's you know definitely been in this high voltage side. Um, they may not have replaced anything. I don't see anything real real uh, major. Uh, but they may have taken this off to do some adjustments and just not put the screws back. Uh, I need to go back in the service manual. There's a couple of things I've noticed. Um, there's actually a spare uh, RCA uh, connector back here. Um, on this unit. I'm not sure that that actually is is supposed to be that way or someone's actually you know robbed a part out of this particular unit. It looks like a fairly easy thing to replace um, but I don't see where it would actually go into and I'll look at the service manual and dig into that more. Um, also on the unit that I need to verify on the service manual um, is there's actually one card slot that doesn't have anything in it. Um, now these may be supposed to be this way, this is the first one I've worked on, but it's missing. But those are things I'm going to kind of do some research on and look at while I'm waiting on those parts to come in. Uh, I, I do know that uh, this particular section will come out uh, here. This is basically all of the RF section. Um, all of the boards are actually here and they go onto a, uh, uh, a motherboard that's down in the lower section of this unit. The front display board, um, actually you can disconnect it and it, it has card edge uh, releases here and you can actually lift it all the way out. Um, so everything else looks fairly easy to get to and work on. Um, and I believe if I actually can get the power back up, uh, this thing will kind of come to life. Uh, looking at the, uh, the cathode ray tube, um, it does appear to be, I believe these came with a manual box, and I think that's what this actually is. Uh, 
I know there are two different styles of uh, displays on these units. Uh, all of the all of the RF uh, appears to still be there. There's a, a small attenuator and a couple of other things that are that don't appear to be disturbed. Uh, they actually have an, you know pieces of RF sealing tape that go around this unit. Um, those have not been disturbed. Um, but that's just a quick update. I uh, hope you're enjoying the videos and thanks for watching. And I should be posting the next video up in the next two weeks or so. It'll take a few days for the parts to come in and, uh, and uh, I'll, get, I'll get right back to work on this. Thanks.